Hey YouTubers, today we are going to talk about hair and this is going to be the first of my dedicated hair videos and compared to fur, hair is actually really a lot easier in most cases because most humans hair is not as um, multicolored faceted as animals are. Um, but anyway, I'm going to work on just a black and white transparent lay out how I would lay one out transparent keen viewers will be able to know that my eye and stuff isn't perfect in here I just wanted to get something for that contrast so we weren't just laying some hair on a white piece of paper went ahead and put that background in so we can show you how we deal with that darker background behind it and where the background gets lighter but let's get on into it Okay, I'm going to break this up into multiple pieces. This isn't the way I normally exactly work, but I think it would be easier to explain that way. For those of you who do not have a value finder, why not? Um, if you've been watching me any length of time, you should know um, that they're great to use. So let's see what our ultimate value is. Our ultimate value is right here, which would be about an 8. So in this area here. Now what I want to point out is that look at this edge this edge is not a crisp sharp line if you laid up a stencil in there and put that crisp line in there you'd have some issues there's some light hairs right in there and you know there's some hair in there so just to start out i'm going to just kind of fill in this area here and we're going to leave a little bit of room right here because it's a little bit lighter in that location i'm going to just freehand in around the forehead and that should give me a close enough approximation I'm going to run that up I'm going to use some dagger strokes to where I end it to pay attention to right here so so that I can make my transition later we'll bring this all the way in there and then like I said there's some spots we want to lay off here I will work this in I'm not gonna go real fast with my paint because if you flood it real fast get too dark too fast you can create some issues plus putting this in here kind of streaky gives you a little bit of texture to work with if you my paints are thinned out a little bit since they are transparent which is why I'm kind of going a little bit slow with it if you use a straight opaque black uh, straight opaque and mixed up a gray tone you can come in here a little faster but uh, we'll get to opaques in another video we don't want to create any harsh edges that we can't work with let's check our value Yep, a little bit lighter than 9, maybe just a hair darker than 8. I don't know how well you can make that out on the screen. That's about as close as I can get it. Sorry about the compressor. I'm running real time. Um, so let's come in here next, and let's see what we got with our hair. So we got some dark spots. Those are our ultimate dark spots, which are about the same as that value eight that we had going on there. Might be a seven. So we've got those darker spots and then we've got those lighter spots. So what I'm gonna do is come in here. I'm not gonna go all the way to evaluate eight though. I'm gonna lay a little bit in here in my darker spots since we're working transparently. We're gonna get these big chunks in. 
kind of follow the direction. Of course, I drew some lines to give me some general guidelines where I'm going with it so that I'm not lost. Now, when we get up in here, it's a little bit streaky, so we're going to make it a little bit streaky. We got a change in direction in the hair. Notice how it comes this way. So when you got that change of direction, all you got to do is come in here. You could take a shield, and actually sometimes that's the best way. You can take a shield to protect that so that your direction of flow isn't off. You don't run if you're having problems with your dagger. That way, you put this shield up here. And then you can just concentrate on getting your daggers the right direction. And these aren't, you know, these are these are basic strokes, guys. So these are not. Uh, You know, I'm not in here trying to get fine lines. We'll come back up into our here. Now, I want to see what we got going on here. I'm going to stop right there. That's not the way I'd normally do it, but that's where I'm going to stop anyway for this tutorial so y'all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add some smaller strokes in here in my darker spots. Then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to worry about this outside edge just yet. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to lightly bring a little bit of my transparent paint over the top. Like that. Then I'm going to pay attention to what kind of, what do I got going on? I've got these highlights coming in here, right? And those are right there. So in this particular case, I pull some of those out. With my eraser. Not pulling out fine lines right now. I'm using the back side of this big eraser, so So it's sections of hair, chunks of hair is what we're dealing with. We'll get into some fine lines, but we're not going to do that just yet. You got that hair that runs all the way up here outside of our flow. We're not going to quite get into that until we put a little bit more color in here. So back, we're going to glaze over it all again. Now, it might make sense to you why I didn't bring that all the way to a value 8 immediately when I was painting those darker tones because each time I layer with the transparent, it's going to get whatever I'm laying on top of is going to get darker. This is, so here, I want to pull in some of those hairs. We're going to bring a couple little fine ones in here. You got this one that comes in here. Now, before I get any further with that, I want to deal with some of this outside. If you look closely, you can see there's kind of like almost just a shadow right there. There's a couple of really fine lines and then almost a shadow in there. I want to put just a little bit of shadow. And then I'm going to put a couple...
of small hairs in there. I'm gonna come back in, get all my colors in. Now I got this hair that runs all the way out around and back down. In this particular case, I wanna use a fiberglass scratch pen. Having a little trouble trying to get uh, this pulled around with a want, way I want without getting in the way of the camera. Fill in, back in our darker spots, and you've created some depth. Okay, I had to change the camera angle because I just could not get in there without getting in the way of the camera. So now I'm going to come in here with. An exacto. I'm uh, here. We're gonna have some random hairs. That will cross over everything. And then there's some hair that's also gonna be in the background. And some flyaways. that we can pull out. Pull out a couple little more spots in there. And then I'm just gonna knock them back, them harsh edges back just a little bit. A couple more random dark flyaways. Like down here, you gotta be very. Okay, as I said, I had to stop the camera for a minute, but as I was saying, so I'm gonna come down here, grab some of these. I'm not doing anything really fine. And right now, it probably looks a little bit funny. This is off here. This is actually a problem that I created for myself. We'll put some random hairs crossing here and there. We got some of those random hairs put in outside. And I'm sorry about the neighborhood dogs are all barking like crazy. Now, that might not look right. We're going to get ready to go into the next section and it'll start tying together. It's important to remember a couple of things. Hair is fluid, it moves, it's constantly in motion. It's never in the exact same shape. Hair is never neat and straight, so you have to be able to create some random structures within the hair. Hair is definitely never that neat, especially if your hair is mine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. I want you to pay attention to the crown, the way this crown lays out. One is there's some dark hairs that come over the top. Small ones, a really dark chunk section right there, a bunch of small ones in here. And then our hair flows in this direction, roughly. But if you paint everything just like that, it's not going to look natural because some of those hairs go this way, some of them go down a little more, but they all flow that direction roughly, but they move this way and that way. So what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to cover in this outside section, get that in there so we can focus on this section right here and the crown. Okay, as I said... I'm going to fill in these darker sections here, and as you notice, over here in our reference, there are some stray hairs that pop out. 
there are some stray dark hairs across that lighter background in the back and we don't want to completely cover over this because there's some streaking going on so we're going to put a little darks in there we'll put a little bit of color on everything we'll put a little bit of color in everything we're going to work on then i'm going to darken this in and tie this back down into here notice a bunch of small random hairs normally like i said i would normally work this all one part at a time but i wanted to break it down into sections hoping that that makes it a little bit easier to understand some of them directional flow we get over here we've got some we need to come in with some dagger strokes but when you do those dagger strokes like I was saying make sure you don't keep all those dagger strokes neat you want them to be a little random we got several sections that come out here same thing and then they start to curve down into the other hair there as the hair they've got this this particular hair case you got heavy hair long or long hair and the weight of that it's all long and the weight of that is pulling that down even though they've styled it the weight of the hair is pulling it so it's going to curve in kind of a natural curve but you're going to have random hairs that pop out in different locations so we'll fill there's a blurry out of focus hair right there we got our darks right there getting my dark spot in there before that paint gets too dry and sits too long however a couple little randoms in there because it's easier to do while the paint is wetter than it is to do after the fact now we've got a couple little dark hairs that come out there and if you can't do them freehand like i'm going to do <clears throat> now i've taken a piece of paper and i put a little slit in it and i'm holding it apart with my magnets you can use uh fresh get or things like that and then i'm just going to gently go over the top of it and you get some of those really fine sharp hairs easily that way i got that random blurry out of focus clump of hair back here i've got this hair that comes in right here and then put some messy hairs on the outside like that In this particular case you have a hair that runs up here and you got some lighter ones against the darker spot and the darker the background is the lighter those are going to appear in your background so we'll put a couple of those in we don't want them to be like really straight because they're flyaway hairs which means they're going to be very kind of curly and bent up and things like that so now that i've got those back in i'm gonna come back in here and I'm going to work this section right here. And we're going to work that in to our here or there. The flow is going this way, of course. This is where we ended. So we want some hairs. We want some dark spots to go in there. Dark shapes. Don't think about hair. Think about these dark shapes that you're forming. That's all you have to think about is dark 
shapes. Then this is really dark in here. I'm gonna put a little paint on all of it. You got some wild hairs that'll come across. And then a section of wild hair. And you get some randoms. Make some mess. Just completely and totally messy in here. Putting in some more paint on top of it. Those will be very, they'll hardly be noticeable. So, sticking with our same patterns of hair. And we're not completely covering up our lights. I'm gonna keep working it until you get to your ultimate value, which of course you should be using your value checker if you're not 100% certain. Notice these hairs right here coming out of there, those hairs kind of turn almost direct sideways instead of following that up flow here that's just a little bit of that randomness we talked about in shape I'm gonna come around and check check my values check where my random hairs are if I want some more or not And in here, I got a little too dark when I was adding some stuff in. So I'm going to pull some of that out. And if I go too far, I'll just fill it back in with a little more paint. Guys, and this is what she looks like, you know, kind of when I finished up. I could go further than this. We could put more work into it. Um, we can make it look a little bit better. But for the purposes of this, this is just a five by seven. This is what it looks like unmasked and not when you're really, really up close on it and you see all the little minor imperfections. Um, like I said, we could go a little further. I didn't really see the point in it for this simple tutorial. Anyway, guys, if this is your first time here, hey, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell if you like what you're seeing and you guys can help me out by giving me a thumbs up in the video if you liked it come on guys leave me comments below if you got any questions anything you want to know about and i'll be sure and try to get back to you as soon as i can but uh if i didn't introduce myself i'm bill kennedy with w leon artistry and we appreciate y'all y'all have a good day bye